Good morning and welcome to our final day in 1 Corinthians 15. Please turn there and once again read or listen to the entire chapter. As you do, uh, remember what we've learned this week. Uh, let those truths sink in and establish your faith securely in Christ. So read or listen and we'll finish this week together. Monday's lesson, Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried, he was raised, he was seen by many. That is the gospel, the good news. On Tuesday, Paul led us to consider, but what if Jesus didn't rise? What would that mean? Well, then the hundreds who saw him after his death lied. And those who have put their faith in him are misled and they mislead others. Sad. Wednesday, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. His witnesses told the truth because it was the truth. Our faith in Christ will save us from our sins and unite us with the Father and his forever family. Yesterday, we read Paul's brief defense of the fact that there is a resurrection. It is a reality. Uh, notice how those who don't believe it live self-indulgent lives. And those of us who do believe risk everything to serve our Lord. We have no fear of death because we know what awaits us, who awaits us. And today, why does God allow death? We don't fear it, but we don't like it, and we wish we didn't have to go through it. So why is there death and an ending of this body that houses our eternal souls? Well, verse 42, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, but what is raised is imperishable. So we get rid of this body of flesh so that we are given a resurrection body and a body that is imperishable, uh, bodies that will never deteriorate, uh, get damaged, face disease, or die. We like that, don't we? Verse 43, it's sown in dishonor, it's raised in glory. This body's drawn to sin. Well, that won't work in heaven where there is no sin. So we're given glorious, perfected bodies that will not desire sin. What a relief. Verse 43, it is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Our bodies are weak. They wear out, they get weary. So we get new bodies that will have God's power so that we are not weak, do not get weary, and we don't wear out. Verse 44, it's sown a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. Since there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. As sure as you see your physical body, you can be assured that you will be given a spiritual body that will house your soul for all eternity. Verse 49, you've been born the image of Adam. With your new body, you will bear the image of Christ. It's this simple, verse 50, flesh and blood can't live in heaven. You must have an imperishable spiritual body and you will be given one. When? Verse 51, I tell you a mystery. When Christ returns, all who believe in him and belong to him will be changed by him. In a flash, in a moment, we will receive our imperishable, glorious, powerful, spiritual bodies. No wonder Paul celebrates death. Where is your sting, uh, your victory? Thanks be to God, he gives us the guaranteed victory at our resurrection because that will happen through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at me, don't ever doubt the resurrection, not Jesus, nor yours to come. Don't let the enemy steal from you the glorious hope you have coming. You get a new body. Don't fret about losing this one. You get to live in heaven. Don't fret about the things of this world. You get to be with Jesus. Don't fret about the distance that's there now. One day, you will see him face to face and you'll be with him forevermore. Hallelujah. 
Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the promise of eternal life with you in heaven, in our new bodies that will never perish, suffer, or sin. Today, take our lives and use us to bring glory to Jesus. And now present your prayers to the Lord. God bless you.